Hello dear students. Today we are starting a new chapter Elements of Embedded System. This is a 6 hour portion from your paper Advanced Electronics 2. An embedded system is a microcontroller or a microprocessor based system which is designed to perform a specific task. For example, a fire controller, a washing machine, an ATM machine, etc. are embedded systems. In this chapter, you will learn to, uh, some examples of embedded systems, processor chips for embedded applications, a simple microcontroller using embedded systems, and also embedded processor families. An embedded system is a computer system or combination of a computer processor and computer memory and also input or output devices that is peripheral devices that is dedicated to perform a specific task may be mechanical or electronic in nature. For example, industrial machines, consumer electronics, agricultural and processing industry devices, automobiles, medical equipment, cameras, digital watches, household appliances, aeroplanes, venting machines, toys, as well as mobile devices and are also uh, anything what we see around or any electronic device you see around are maybe of an embedded system. As the name suggests, embedded means something that is attached to another thing. An embedded system can be thought as a computer hardware system having a software embedded on it. An embedded system can be independent or a part of a large system. In this video, you will learn different characteristics of an embedded system, the components in an embedded system, the hardware structure of an embedded system, different types of it and also software architecture inside an embedded system. You will look into different examples and also the advantages and disadvantages of embedded systems. Let's look into some of the characteristics of an embedded system. An embedded system is single functioned. That means an embedded system always usually performs a specified operation and does the same repeatedly. For example, a fire alarm always detects fire. A washing machine always washes and it cannot detect fire. So it is always single functioned. An embedded system is tightly constrained. All computer systems have constraints on design matrices, but those on an embedded system are especially tight. The design matrices is a measure of implementation's feature such as cost, size, power and performance. It must be of the size to fit into a single chip and also it should perform fast enough to process data in real time while consuming minimum power to have an extended battery life. So they are constrained in the way they are working. They are reactive and real time. Many embedded systems must continuously react to changes in the system's environment and must capture certain results in real time without any delay. Consider an example of a car cruiser controller which you see in the car's dashboard. It continuously monitors and reacts to the speed and the brake sensors. It must compute acceleration or decelerations repeatedly within a limited time. A delayed computation can result in failure of the control of the car. So they must be reactive and have to work in real time. They are microprocessor based. It must be a microprocessor or a microcontroller based system. 
you have already learned about microprocessor, we may use an 8086 or 8085 chip in these embedded systems so that they can work. And these chips are being connected to different peripherals so that they have different specific tasks to perform. They have a memory. It must have a memory and its software usually embeds on ROM. It does not need a secondary memory as like in computers. They are connected. It must have connection to peripherals to collect input as well as to give output to devices. It is a hardware software system. Software is used for more features and flexibility whereas hardware is used for performance and security. Embedded systems vary in their complexity. Generally, they consist of three main elements, the hardware, the software and the real-time operating system RTOS. The hardware of the embedded system is based on microprocessors and microcontrollers. Microprocessors are very similar to microcontrollers and typically refer to a CPU that is integrated with basic computing components such as memory chips and digital signal processors. Microcontrollers have same components built into one system. Software for the embedded systems can vary in complexity. However, industrial grade uh, microcontrollers and embedded IoT systems, that is Internet of Things systems, usually run very simple softwares that requires little memory. The real-time operating system are TOS. These are not always included in embedded systems, especially in smaller scale systems. RTOSs define how a system works by supervising the software and executing the program in real time. These systems may have a GUI that is graphical user interface or may sometimes just user interfaces. You can imagine uh, the ticket vending machine you see in the uh, hand of a, a ticket uh, conductor in the KSRTC bus, they use a microprocessor. So they take a real input from the uh, passengers, then the software programs it, processes it, the software computes the complete amount and the hardware is designed to print it. So these are the components that we use in a uh, embedded system. In terms of hardware, a basic embedded system would consist of a sensor, an A to D converter, a processor, a D to A converter, an acutator and also a memory. Sensors convert physical sense data into electronic signals. For example, a smoke sensor senses the smoke and convert it into electronic signal based on how much smoke is there inside the room. It then it converts this analog data into digital data using an analog to digital converter. Then it is being sent to a processor. A processor is mainly ASCII based processor. We may use some 8086 or 8085 uh, microcontroller or microprocessor for this. It processes the digital signal and stores them inside the memory. Then after the result of the processor is being sent to digital to analog converter. It changes the digital data and converts it into analog form. After that, it is being sent to acutator. Acutators compare the actual output of the memory to the stored output so that it can correct the data in real time. So whatever 
output we are expecting from an embedded system is already stored in the memory so that executor can compare the output which was just given to the set of outputs which are already stored in the memory and map it to the exact output that is to be produced so that we can minimize errors in the output. A sensor reads the external input and it converts and make this input into readable format of the processor that is make it into ASCII code and the processor turns that information into useful output information for the embedded system. There are different types of embedded systems and they vary in functional requirements. Based on functional requirements, we can classify embedded systems as mobile embedded systems that are small sized systems and are designed to be portable. Digital cameras are examples of mobile embedded systems. Network based embedded systems. They are connected to a network to provide output to other systems. For example, a home security system is a point of a scale system. It is a network embedded system. Something detects uh, the fault in the system and also the action is taken by some other embedded system. So they are connected. Other type is standalone embedded system. They are not reliant on a host system like any other embedded system. They can perform a specific task. However, they do not necessarily belong to a host system. A calculator, a MP3 player, a game board, etc. are examples of a standalone embedded system. Next is a real-time embedded system. This gives output which is defined in a time interval. They are often used in medical, industrial and military sectors because they are responsible for time critical tasks. Most of the systems you see in your car's dashboard is a real-time embedded system. For example, a traffic control system is a real-time embedded system. Embedded systems can also be categorized based on their performance requirements as small-scale embedded system that is which uses a not more than 8-bit microcontroller, a medium-scale embedded system which uses a larger microcontroller that is about 16 to 32 bit and often links microcontrollers together. There are sophisticated scale embedded systems which often uses several algorithms that result in software and hardware complexities. They have more complex software and a configurable processor and also a programmable logical array. Let's look into the embedded systems architectural softwares. There are several common embedded system software architectures which become necessary as embedded systems grow and become more complex in scale. These include simple control loops that is they call subroutines which manage a specific part of the hardware or the embedded system programming for example a ticket printer there are interrupt controlled systems they have two loops a main one and a secondary one interruptions in the loop triggers the secondary task for example, if a printer malfunctions, we will press that yellow button, yellow button with that right exclamation on it, and it will print the error statement. So it have two processes. Another is a cooperative multitasking, and it's essentially in a simple control loop located in an application programming interface. 
another is preemptive multitasking or multi-threading often used with RTOS that is real-time operating system and features synchronization and task switching strategies they are mainly used in industrial level embedded systems such as in 3d printing let's look into different examples of embedded systems embedded systems are used in a wide range of technologies across an array of industries some examples include automobiles modern cars commonly consist of many computers sometimes as many as hundred or embedded systems designed to perform different tasks within the vehicle some of these systems perform basic utility functions and others provide entertainment or user facing functions some embedded systems in consumer vehicles include cruise control backup sensors suspension control navigation systems and airbag systems another set is mobile phones these consist of many embedded systems including a graphical user interface software and hardware operating systems cameras microphones and usb and also input output modules industrial machines they can contain embedded systems like sensors and can be embedded systems by themselves industrial machines often have embedded automation systems that perform specific monitoring and control functions medical equipments these may contain embedded systems like sensors and control machines medical equipments such as industrial machines also may be very user friendly so that a human health isn't jeopardized by preventable machine task this means that they often include a more complex operating system and graphical user interface to design for specific and appropriate user interface now look into certain advantages and disadvantages of embedded systems the advantages are they are easily customizable they consume very low power they are of very low cost and they perform enhanced performances while looking to the disadvantages it requires high development effort because they are tightly constrained and they have to work in real time with accuracy and fast they take also a larger time in the market because they are specific task designed by this we have come to an end of this lecture see you in the next video thank you